Uh, primes are probably the largest plants, or maybe outside of Agapanthus that we'll see in this particular uh, in this particular list. Okay, primes have huge uh, structures as far as bulbs are concerned, so they're uh, can can be this big around. I just planted a bunch of primes this last weekend, and they uh, basically will form these new little bulblets on the base of the bulb or the side of the bulb there. And you can see this is actually what's happening here. We actually need to come in and, and uh, thin this out and plant these and they'll make new plants. Okay? But really, uh, one easy way to tell uh, crinums are these large bulb structures. Okay? Really thick and uh, very coarse. All right, then the foliage will be uh, very much a, a droopy foliage, so it's not gonna, this is not just because this plant is, is dry or anything like that, but this is just the way these leaves are. You can you'll notice that uh, even here by water that the foliage just sort of droops, okay? So very leathery, very plastic uh, feel to the foliage. Again, you can feel the venation there, okay, on the back side, but not like gladiolus, it's a little bit different. It's not nearly as rough. On the top side, it's much smoother. On the bottom side, it's not nearly as rough as gladiolus. Right? And then you'll notice that as the uh, new growth flushes out, these old, older leaf, strap-like leaf structures begin to senesce and sort of die and become very spongy. Right? And then the main thing with the crinum is the flower stalk. Okay? It sends up a scape that is probably uh, three foot, four foot tall. All right, and then the the flowers are really nice and large. A lot of times you'll see uh, multiple, a lot of times you'll see flower stalks that are farther up here. Sometimes this particular one apparently doesn't necessarily uh, uh, have the species type, but at any rate, you'll see flower stalks up here with these sort of really light uh, blooms. All right, so trumpet shape. They'll, and they'll sort of be right at the very top of that particular stalk, and there'll be two or three of them up there, uh, and they're uh, emanate horizontally, okay? Whites, uh, a lot of times, crinums are called milk and wine lilies, okay? Milk and wine because their base is white, and then there'll be a, like a little uh, purple stripe running through them, sort of like these, okay? So they call them milk and wine lilies. They're not true lilies, we'll see true lilies here in a few minutes. But just no crinum. Okay. Always burgundy. No, yeah. no burgundy is. Uh, it just so happens it's kind of that they're uh, they both have burgundy foliage, but a lot of times they'll just be like a, a light colored green. Okay. This just happens to be a darker colored uh, cultivar. Many different cultivars. Uh, very difficult to tell from one another sometimes until they bloom. Uh, so uh, they can get confusing if you're producing them. But the point is, large bulb structures, three or four foot long strap-like leaves that are very thick and leathery, okay? New growth is sort of erect. And then those flower stalks that are thick and, and uh, two or three foot tall with those uh, lily-like uh, flowers up at the top, okay? Good bulbs for the south. The only problem is that they, uh, we teach them a little too early. They're never, they're always frozen when we teach them this, this time of year, okay? Questions?